So let's suppose we have some region that we that's defined here. We have four lines. We have x plus y equals 1, x plus y equals 4, x minus 2y is 0, x minus 2y is negative 4. And let's say we draw those four lines. The blue ones are the x plus y's, and the red ones are the x minus 2y's. And we, we have a region here, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out a way to transform that region so that we have very, very convenient limits of integration. The reason why we might want to do this is that if we were trying to integrate on this region, we'd have a couple of issues. What we'd have to do is we'd have to say, all right, well, um, if I'm going to integrate this, I know that x goes from, you know, maybe that's negative 1. I don't know where that crosses over all the way to wherever that is there. That actually may not even be negative 1. That might be like 2 and a half or something like that. So I have to figure out where those crossover points are, and that will be my first issue. My second issue is that even though I have x fixed going left to right, my bottom function is this, and then that's my top function, and then there's this crossover point where this is now my bottom function, and that's my top function, and then there's another crossover point where this is my bottom function, and that's my top function. So you end up having to generate three separate integrals uh, where your x limits are the same, but the y limits change per, inter per integral. And that can be inconvenient. It, it could be inconvenient in the sense of the function you're integrating might also be complicated to deal with if this is the region you're integrating over. So we want to find a better way to do this. We want to say, all right, I know that's some sort of parallelogram. So I wonder if there's a way to take that parallelogram and kind of like shift it over and make it a lot more like a rectangle? And the answer is yes, there is a way to do that. But we have to come up with a methodology. And what we find is for these types of regions, these uh, the standard geometric regions, whether they're rectangles or parallelograms, even triangles, if, you, if you're a little careful about it, you can use uh, equations to set yourself up, uh, or fairly straightforward equations, and solve for what those transformations need to be. So what we need to do is we need to find these transformation functions and then we'll describe this transformed region. So what we're going to do is since we have two sets here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, well, I want u to be x plus y and I'd like v to be x minus 2y. And why do I want to do that? Well, the reason I want to do that is what that's going to do from here is it's going to say, okay, well, now I know that u is going from 1 to 4. So my u is going from 1 to 4. And then... I know my v is going from negative 4 to 0. And that means that now my integration region is a simple square, which is super nice. Uh, typically, you'll see it. I did u and v kind of the opposite of the way you normally see it. You normally see u where we think of the x-axis and v where we see the y-axis, but I'd already drawn it this way, so that's what we're doing. But anyway, with that substitution in mind, that's great and all, but what we need to do is we need to solve for x by itself and we need to solve for y by itself. And to do that, we have to go back and revisit solving systems of equations. So if you remember, any two equations, I can, I can use... Uh, what we call linear combinations or constant multiples of the equation, and they're still true. Remember, it basically all adds up to I can multiply any equation by a number, and if and I can add the same thing to both sides. So in this one, I could say, well, if u is x plus y, then 2u is 2x plus 2y. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the same thing to both sides. But on the right side, 
Since these two are equivalent, I'm going to add the left sides together and I'm going to add the right sides together. But notice that these, these y's cancel, so I just get 3x, which leaves me with x is 2 thirds u plus 1 third v. And that gets me how my equation in x. Similarly, I can do the, I can say, all right, well, if that's true, then um, I can say negative u is equal to negative x plus y, and I can leave v alone. And then I can add the right sides and the left sides together because, again, I'm just adding the same thing to both sides. So I get um, negative u plus v is equal to uh, negative, or sorry, that's minus y. So negative 3y, dividing by negative 3 on both sides, I get 1 third u plus 1 third v. And what now I have is I have some sort of g of uv, and I have some sort of h of uv. And why does this matter? Well, this matters because now that I have these two, I'm going to be able to compute a Jacobian. And then by computing, or now that yeah, these, these functions here, I can compute a Jacobian. And instead of the limits of integration being really weird over here, it turns out that they're nice and clean. And they're, they're, they're on this rectangle. And you might ask yourself, well, how is this possible? Well, what it is, is this is a linear algebra thing. So if you haven't had linear algebra, then this may be a little bit foreign to you. But in linear algebra, you study something called change of bases. And what that really just means is instead of, instead of thinking maybe in terms of like walking in a big city where you go up a block and over a block, right? You think about walking in terms of forward and to the side. You might think of sort of almost like the way you know, like a bishop moves in chess, like a bishop moves one space, but it can't move in the gridded way you think. A bishop has to move diagonal. So for him, straight is for us diagonal. So think about that. Like, you know, this is like these bishops moving. And what we're able to do is we're able to think natively in how that moves and transform it this way into a rectangle. And by doing that, we can avoid a lot of confusion or we can avoid a lot of complication in developing our integrals and we can kind of get straight to it.